Bert, Bert, Bert Badger, Bert, 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 Bert Badger. Nice to meet you. Hey, little badgers, I'm Bert Badger, and welcome to Nice to Meet You. If it's your first time joining us, nice to meet you. Hey guys, today we're gonna go to Oakland, California to go on an aircraft carrier. We're gonna go on top of the USS Hornet. And it was a real vessel back in the wars. So I'm really excited to show you guys my awesome adventure. But first, don't forget to wait till the end of the episode to see what's inside my magic, rip, rip, magic, rip, rip, magic, rip, 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 magic fanny pack. All right, Bert Badger is in Oakland, California, ready to go on to the USS Hornet. Let's check in and see how he's doing. Take it away, Bert. Thanks, Bert Badger. Hey, I'm Bert Badger, and today we're in front of an aircraft carrier. It's called the USS Hornet, and it houses helicopters, airplanes, and space stuff. That's right, some of the stuff on this aircraft carrier has been in outer space, space, space. So let's go inside and check it out. Permission to come aboard. Hey, little badgers, this is my new friend, Dossett Mike. He's gonna show us around the USS Hornet. Mike, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Bert. Cool. So as we walked in, I saw this big, giant bell, and I was like, I really want to ring that. What is this bell for? It's a ceremonial bell, Bert, and it's there to um, announce very important people coming aboard, and also we use it in the fog. Fog is when clouds come down and it's hard to see, and you just have to like, where am I going? Can I ring the bell, Mike? You bet. You bet. <laughs> cool. <laughs> that was awesome. Did, did I do a cool? good job? You did. You did a great job. Cool. Let's go check out the rest of the ship. Mike, what kind of plane is this? Bert, this is an S-2. This was an anti-submarine chaser. So these guys could fly for hours on end, low and slow it's called. They fly at about 300 feet over the water, mm -hmm. about 100 miles an hour, and look for submarines. That's fun. That's their job. What's all this tape on it? They're getting ready to repaint it. They're doing a complete restoration on the ship right now. So it'll look brand new? Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. And it's going to have the insignias of one of the squadrons that actually served on the Hornet. That's awesome. Yeah. Everyone yeah. gets the recognition. How yes, cool. Indeed. Yeah. Mike, what's this plane called? This is so beautiful. This is called a Wildcat. <laughs> this one. Uh, meow. Yeah, <laughs> this one never actually served on the Hornet ever because the Hornet was built after these were taken out of service, but these became trainers. And this one sat at the bottom of Lake Michigan for over 50 years. I'm from Michigan. I'm from right there, Lansing. Lake Michigan looks yeah. like an ocean because you can't see across it. No, you can't. And it's the water is so cold and fresh that this didn't disintegrate, disintegrate Sorry, in the water. How did an airplane end up in the water? They used to train pilots on Lake Michigan for carrier landing. They put up a kind of a fake aircraft carrier, and a lot of them missed. Oh! <laughs> and that's where we got this. Mike, this guy looks like he's wearing Luke Skywalker's outfit from an X-Wing. He does kind of, but he's a, this is a Navy pilot suit. If you see the name on it, Lieutenant Sharp, uh -huh. that's a dear friend of mine, named Willie Sharp. Dosa, like me. Okay. And he donated his flight suit. And he flew my favorite airplane. What's that? F-8 Crusader. This is called an ejector seat. If you're in peril or danger when you're in an airplane, you push a button, you grab this, and it goes and you shoot, and then a parachute comes out, and you're rescued and safe. That's right. This airplane's called the TBM. It flew in World War II. And funny, one of our US presidents flew one of these and got shot down in a war, but he was okay. This is called Miss June. Leaf, do you like the helicopters? Yeah. It's big. It's so big. Very big. And it flies so fast. <laughs> it's so cool that kids get to come see all this history, and I'm so glad that you're here with me today, enjoying it as well. Mike, what's so cool about the helicopter behind us? It was a dual purpose helicopter, Bert. That means it had two purposes. And the purposes were, it was a rescue helicopter, so it could pick up a downed pilot if it needed to, a pilot that went in the water. Mm -hmm. It was also a submarine hunter. What's so that mean? That means it could dip a thing called a sonar down in the water. 
the sonar sends out sound waves that bounce back off of items in the water. So like a dolphin? Yes. <laughs> Echo location. <laughs> yeah. You want to see the river there? This is such a big help in World War II. This is a rescue helicopter, correct? Yes. This is only a rescue helicopter. And I see it has six propeller blades instead of the regular four or five. Yeah. That's because it doesn't have, if you look at the others, they have a small rotor on the back. Mm -hmm. That's called, <clears throat> excuse me, it's called a tail rotor. Oh, yeah. So there's no tail rotor on this. Oh, I didn't even notice that. Yeah. It's this, the little differences and subtle differences between these helicopters really make a big difference. You bet they do. How many people could fit in here? In here, probably four. Maybe five if you pushed it. Wow, this is a really cool and unique helicopter. And also, no smoking. Not only does this aircraft care of helicopters and airplanes, but it also has stuff that was in outer space. This helicopter was in the movie Apollo 13 and helped recover the astronauts in the movie. Yes, it did. <laughs> what else is cool about this? What else is cool about this is that it was the uh, recovery helicopter on the original Gemini 4 mission, and that was our first spacewalk. So not only was it in a movie doing things that actually happened in real life, but it actually did do things in real life. Absolutely it did. That's yeah. amazing. And important things. Absolutely. <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah. We need to get back on the moon. I think so. That's so cool. I'd like to. When you're on the moon, you walk like this. Like that. That's right. Nailed it. Mike, can we see a capsule that was in actual outer we, space? We sure can. Oh. I'm so excited. Space stuff makes Burt Badger so happy. We're so lucky to be here today on the USS Hornet because this was in outer space. <laughs> this reminds me of a bad Airbnb I once had. <laughs> it's so tiny in there. How did they even move? Um, first thing is, they were plastered into the seats when it took off because of gravity. Mm -hmm. But then after it got into space, they're floating. Yeah. Easy, easy. Uh, blasted in outer space, and then they could go in a different part of the spaceship right. and hang out. Yeah. And play cards, play pogs. Cards probably not because they'd float away. Okay. <laughs> One, zero, and lift off of Space Shuttle Atlantis on a mission to build resupply, and to do research on the International Space Station. I'm an astronaut in outer space, and I eat things out our dry, sealed in bags. Do, 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 do. You know, Bert, if you were actually were in space, you'd have to come back and stay away from everybody else. You'd have to stay in something like that for about three days in a big building for 21 days. Oh, wow. So you didn't get space cooties on other people. Space cooties? Oh, what? That's right. Are those real? No, because they found out that there weren't any, and they only did it for four missions, and the rest of them didn't have to do that. Okay. Well, I would love to be on mission five then. There you go. <laughs> oh, this is so cool. This is where the airplanes take off and land? That's it. This is so great. Look at how big this is. So much space. Safe landing from Burt Badger. Yeah. Let's go check out some of these cool jets. These ones are more modern. Yes, they are. <laughs> Mike, it looks like this jet's seen better days. It has, Burt. This plane came into being in the 1950s. It's an F-4 Phantom. It actually served through the late 80s. Mm -hmm. And um, this one has the distinction of being the last F-4 to land on an aircraft carrier. This one right here. Mike, what is this plane? Right over here. That is an F-14 Tomcat, Bert. Why does that sound so familiar? Because it was used in the movie Top Gun. Knew it. That's what Tom Cruise flew in Top Gun. You're Iceman, I'm Goose. <laughs> OK, you got it. Mike, how fast can this jet go? It can go 1,600 miles per hour or Mach 2. Is that faster than the speed of oh, sound? Yes, it is. It's twice the speed of sound. The speed of sound is when my voice 
hits your ear that fast. So that means that this jet could get to your ears right now two times faster than how I'm talking to you. I know that might be confusing, but your parents are like, that actually makes sense. <laughs> Mike, these engines are so big. They're huge and they're so powerful. When they go on maximum thrust, which is pushing that way so that the goes that way, they shoot a flame out the back of this thing that's 45 feet long. That's like seven of me? That's seven of me laid straight out, back to back, head to toe, all the way back there. It's how far the thrust goes? That's how far the thrust on it. It's called an afterburner. It's extra thrust. To that, give them extra stuff. Afterburner is my nickname. Why does it have two tails? For better, the afterburner. What's it called where the pilot sits? It's called the cockpit. And that's this windows here? That's the second window back. There's another window behind that, and that's where a guy called a Rio sits. So there's so two. Two people in this airplane. Two, two people, yeah. Yeah, it would look like at least two people would have to maintain this vehicle. Right. It's so it takes big. a pilot and a Rio, which is a radar intercept officer. So does the Rio floss the teeth, and then the pilot brushes the teeth of the shark here? No, I think it's the other way around. OK. I think the, the Rio is the, the guy who does the nasty stuff, and then the pilot just kind of comes in and and flosses later, you know, yeah. cleans the teeth up. He already has enough responsibilities anyway. Yeah, he does. us on the USS Hornet and inviting us to the danger zone. <laughs> My pleasure. Thanks for coming. You did such a great job and you made us all so happy and I hope that everybody gains something from being on this aircraft carrier if it be the jets, the aircraft, the space stuff or just history in general. Make sure you go tell a cool friend about what you saw today and if you really liked it make sure you subscribe. I'm Burt Badger, and I'm going to send it back to the studio with Burt Badger. Take it away, Burt. <laughs> wow, that was such a cool adventure on the USS Hornet. Great job, Burt Badger. You're a cute little strawberry crepe. <laughs> now it's time for my favorite game. No, you silly goose. No, you silly goose. OK, all right, all right, all right. What is it? What do we think? Oh, I got it. Do you put mud on your nachos? No! no you silly, silly goose. goose! That would be too crunchy. <laughs> now it's time for another great segment. Let's check it out. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Penguin. Welcome back to my realm. I was just about to take a bite of my pancake. Well, you'll have to wait. Because today I need your assistance, Mr. Penguin. All right. Are you ready to help me with today's magic tricks? Yeah, man. All right. Without further ado, let's conjure our first trick. Ah! What have we here? What is that? Two small cards. Mm. What color are these cards, Mr. Penguin? Well, I don't know. You don't know? Well, let's see if we can get some help from home. All right. Children. All right. What color is this card? What color is this card? <clears throat> That's right, red. Yeah. Unicorn point. <laughs> what color is this card? Blue. Oh. Additional unicorn point. Good job. <laughs> what is that? What would you call these little fellows? Is it a penguin? It's not a penguin. Is it a uh, puffin? It's not a puffin. Uh, I'm out of ideas. Hmm. It's a rabbit! Oh, a rabbit. They That's like to right. eat carrots. Rabbits do enjoy carrots, so I've heard. I like them too. 
Mr. Pigman. Yeah. Can you tell me which of these colors is shorter? Hmm. What's shorter? Shorter would be like smaller. So one of these cards is bigger. Yeah. Bigger, and one is smaller. Oh. What colored card is the smaller of the two? Can you help me get at home, figure this out, please? What do I you think? I'm so confused. Hmm. Hmm. The red one. Oh. That's right. The red card is smaller. The blue card is slightly bigger. How is that magic, bro? Well, just wait and see, Mr. Penguin. Because with my powers of magical spectacular stretch. Boop. What? The red card is bigger. Oh, wow, you really are magical. Thank you. Shall we move on to the next trick? Tell me how you did it. How do I did the trick? Yeah. It's a trade secret. Oh, oh yeah, Ooh. man. Ride him, cowboy. <laughs> this is a fun trick. What? Do you see what I have here, Mr. Penguin? Uh, looks like he has a rope. There's a rope, that's right. One single piece of white rope. One single piece of white rope. And this yeah. is a rope cutter. Oh, dangerous. Specifically designed for cutting ropes in half. Wow, that's so specific. It's a very specific tool of the trade. Yeah. So here we go. We're going to feed this rope. We're going to feed it right into the rope cutter. Wow, you're so graceful. This here is really goes. cool. Yes. Yeah. And we have our single piece of rope floating freely, uncut, as of now. But when I use my magical spectacular powers and cut the rope in half... What? It's now two pieces. Oh, why? The rope didn't deserve that. Put it back together. But I couldn't put the rope back together without some magic. Oh, there it goes. And it's one piece of rope again. You are so magical Isn't and spectacular. That wonderful. Yes. Let me try it. Let me touch it. Yeah, that's one full piece of rope. That's right. Well, thank you, Mr. Penguin, for coming and helping me teach the children the wonders of magic. I have no choice, but I'm happy to be here. Well, I've got a little surprise for you. Let's, uh, for my final trick, I'm going to make this penguin fly. Ah, penguins can't fly. Wow. Put me down, put me down. Put me down, put me down. Whoop. Thank you, children, for coming and playing with us today. Back to you, Bert Badger. Wow. What a great segment that was, and what a great show it's been. And it doesn't stop there. Now we get to see what's inside my magic, rip, rip, magic, rip, 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 magic fanny pack. Magic, 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 magic. Zip, zip, zip. Whoa, this is bigger than usual. Heavier too. I'm having trouble opening it. Oh, whew! Not really necessary since I'm wearing a sweatband. Anyway, it's a kaleidoscope. Do you guys know what a kaleidoscope is? It houses beads and glass in the front here, and then you look through this tube, this hole here, and when you put it up to light and you move it around, you can see tons of different colors and shapes. It's so cool. Sorry, I got distracted. That was way too cool. Check out a kaleidoscope. If you ever get a chance to look through one, do it. <laughs> oh, I'm so sad it's time to go. I had so much fun with you guys today. Oh, but we get to hang out again real soon. Thank you so much for joining me, Bert Badger, on... <laughs> nice to meet you. Bye-bye. Hope you have fun on the aircraft carrier. Bye-bye!